Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to News Dose. So, we do have a pretty major rumor to talk about today as the internet kind of blew up about the possibility of PlayStation acquiring yet another studio. Yeah, they've been gobbling up a lot of studios as of recent, but this one here could potentially be one of the most exciting buyouts if this does indeed come to fruition, and yes, that still is an if. I'll kind of explain all that here in a little bit and what exactly is happening. Now, we did also get an interesting update for the Xbox series that kind of expands on a topic that we discussed just yesterday because it looks like the Xbox series did not only outsell the PlayStation 5 in the UK. Things are getting pretty surprising here, so stay tuned for that later on in the video as well. First though, if you do find yourself enjoying the video and if you want to stay up to date with all of the latest gaming news, make sure to hit that bell notification and subscribe button below. That way you'll be notified every time I post a video, which will be Monday through Friday. So make sure to do that and plus go ahead and hit that like button as well because it does help out the channel a ton. Other than that, though, let's just go and jump right into the video, starting off with CD Projekt Red. CD Projekt Red did post their earning results today, which was pretty impressive to say the least. We did get an update for both Cyberpunk 2077 as well as The Witcher franchise. Now, as a big fan of Witcher myself, I was very happy to hear that The Witcher franchise has now sold 65 million copies worldwide. Now, that's already very impressive, but what's kind of crazy about this is that 40 million of those copies alone came from The Witcher 3. Now, a lot of people kind of consider The Witcher 3 to be one of the greatest RPGs of all time. Actually, I'm going to backtrack. One of the greatest games of all time. So to see it sell 40 million copies, it is nice to see a game like this be rewarded for just how good it actually is. And really, The Witcher 3 is still selling well. We should actually see another resurgence whenever the Xbox series and the PlayStation 5 version does eventually release. Of course, they just delayed that. But absolutely, I do expect to see that 40 million number rise much further than just just that. Now, as for Cyberpunk 2077, they did reveal it's also sold more than 18 million units worldwide, which looks really impressive on paper, but if you start to look at things, this means that it's only sold an additional 4.3 million units since it first launched in 2020. By the end of 2020, they did reveal that it had sold 13.7 million units so you can definitely see a pretty major slowdown there and really i think we kind of all know the reason as to why they rushed this game out to the market and it just didn't quite meet those expectations still though 18 million units is extremely impressive for really any type of game but i, I do have to wonder just how much more success we could have saw if they would have just managed this game the correct way Next up, a very welcome update has been announced for both Sony and Nintendo's subscription services. This is actually following an investigation into auto renewal practices by the Competition and Markets Authority, and this is a really good thing as we are heading into that more subscription-based future. Subscription services for music, movies, games, or whatever has increased in popularity pretty majorly here in recent years, but one thing that we see these big publishers do is that they almost kind of swindle their fans. Basically, what a lot of these companies try to do is that they'll sell you these subscription services and then by default, they'll turn on auto renew. In other words, they're just kind of hoping that you'll forget about it. And once your subscription is over, well, then you'll automatically be charged again for yet another subscription. It's actually a really shady practice that most of these big companies do do. But now that subscription services are gaining in popularity, it looks like that some different people are starting to take notice of this problem. So we are starting to see some investigations. And because of that, we're also seeing some changes. And this does include both Sony and Nintendo. As a result of this investigation, they are now updating their subscription policies. You can actually see here from GameIndustry.biz, Sony has agreed to implement new measures for PlayStation Plus subscribers, which includes contacting long-term customers that haven't used the service for a while to remind them how to cancel subscriptions. If users don't cancel the service but aren't actively using it, Sony will stop taking payments. Nintendo has also altered its business practices. Its Nintendo Switch Online service will no longer be sold with automatic renewal set as the default option. If users wish to turn it on, they will need to do so after signing up. So there you have it, and out of the two solutions here, I do like what Nintendo is doing more. I really feel like that is the most simple solution, and it just puts the decision in customers' hands. I feel like with any subscription service, that auto renewal should never be turned on by default. Let the customers decide that, and it should be up front to them rather than hidden. So definitely a good change on their part, and hopefully everybody follows suit. Now, some of these companies might be forced to make that decision, but if that 
happens, the end result is the same. I just want these auto renewal systems to be turned off by default, give customers that option and make it up front. Let's go ahead and talk about PlayStation though, as something very interesting seems to be happening. So last night it was discovered that the PlayStation banner on their website has been slightly altered. Now this banner shows various PlayStation first party games, including Gran Turismo. You see Astrobot here. You also see Days Gone, which we'll probably never see that game again. There's also Horizon Forbidden West, Demon's Souls, Returnal, The Last of Us, God of War, Ghost of Tsushima, Ratchet and Clank. You have MLB The Show, Blood and Truth, and then right Right here at the end, which actually replaced Concrete Genie, is Death Stranding. This change has caused a lot of speculation online that maybe Kojima Productions has been acquired by Sony. The reason people believe this is that because of all these games outside of Death Stranding are developed by PlayStation First Party Studios. So Death Stranding is the odd one out here, though at the same time it is important to keep in mind that while Death Stranding was not necessarily developed by a first party studio, it however is yes a first party game. Sony does own the Death Stranding IP, so there is a debate that this banner could just simply be showing first party IP rather than games being developed by first party studios. So this isn't necessarily a clear cut indication that Sony absolutely acquired Kojima Productions, but there's a little bit more to this story than just that. There are some other reasons that fans are speculating that maybe Kojima could have been bought out. Just in the last couple of weeks, Hideo Kojima did reveal that Kojima Productions is relocating, though he did not give a specified reason. So some people believe that the relocation might be a direct result of, again, a Sony acquisition. The other part about this though, and this one is quite simple, we've been hearing rumors that Sony has indeed made some type of acquisition or they have some type of acquisition in the works. In the last couple of weeks, Greg Miller and Jeff Grubb, which is a well-respected insider, had mentioned that they had been hearing some rumors that Sony has made some type of big acquisition. Now at the time, neither one of them necessarily seemed overly sure on this, but it is interesting that both of them have been hearing something in the background. So when you start to put all of this together, Together. Death Stranding suddenly appearing on a PlayStation banner, Kojima Productions relocating, and all of this is amidst rumors of a big Sony acquisition. So when you start to put all that together, it does make it sound like maybe something could be happening here. So I would say at the very least, the speculation and the rumors of all of this is quite interesting, and it does make it sound like it's possible. But at the same time, I'm going to go back to what I said earlier in a video, and it is very important to keep this in mind. Death Stranding is a Sony owned IP. So that banner is not necessarily a clear indication that Kojima Productions has actually been acquired. So there's definitely a debate against this. At the same time, though, I will say this. I think Sony acquiring Kojima Productions makes perfect sense. I actually think that it's a perfect pairing. Kojima and PlayStation has a very close relationship, and that's really been through much of his career. I mean, this dates way back to the original PlayStation days, then on to the PlayStation 2, then the PlayStation 3. Last generation with the PlayStation 4, they worked together on a PlayStation-owned IP in Death Stranding, so they clearly have a very, very good relationship. And because of that, Kojima has a ton of PlayStation fans. I know some people might think that he's overrated or that he is a little too crazy or a little too ambitious, but he is a legend, especially within the PlayStation community. So if Sony were to acquire Kojima Productions, I do think that that'd be the perfect fitting and I would be all for it. However, I'm not looking at this banner as a definitive answer, but with Sony here recently making it very clear that they are looking for more studio acquisitions, it will be very interesting who they announce next and on whether or not it ends up being Kojima Productions. Now, one other part about this story comes from the Xbox community, because one thing that we have heard a lot about over the last year is Kojima working on some type of Xbox cloud based game. This has been widely reported on. So if Sony does indeed acquire Kojima Productions, what happens with that game? Well, Jeff Grubb did talk about this on his podcast today, and let's just go and check out what he had to say. As of a couple of weeks ago, the Xbox and Kojima deal was still on. This isn't based on the information I had last year. This is more recent than that. This is still on. Does this mean that PlayStation couldn't have acquired Kojima Productions? Not necessarily. So there you have it. It does look like whether or not Sony acquires them, that Xbox 
Kojima deal is still absolutely happening, but this really isn't any type of indication on whether or not Kojima Productions can be acquired. One thing that we have seen a lot in recent years is studio acquisitions, so we kind of know how they work by this point. If they had contractual obligations prior to the acquisition, they have to honor those contractual obligations regardless of platform. You take a look at something like Ghostwire Tokyo that released just last month. That is a Tango Gameworks developed game, which falls under Bethesda, which is now owned by X. Xbox. So Xbox technically owns Ghostwire Tokyo, but because Sony and Bethesda made a deal before that acquisition, well, they had to honor that and make it a timed exclusive PlayStation 5 title. So in this situation, regardless of acquisition or not, we would see something very similar with Kojima Productions and Xbox. Either way, though, it'll be very interesting to see if any of this amounts to anything here in the next couple of months. But let me know in the comments below on what you think about all of this. Do you think that this banner is indicating an acquisition or do you think it means absolutely nothing? Let me know in the comments below. Let's go ahead and talk about Xbox, though, and this is actually a bit of an expansion on something that we talked about just yesterday. Yesterday, it was reported that the Xbox Series was the best-selling console in the month of March over in the UK, beating out both the Nintendo Switch and the PlayStation 5. A large part of this was reportedly because an increased amount of supply for the Xbox Series X specifically, and because of that, the Xbox Series saw a 61% jump month over month. It just once again seems like Microsoft might have alleviated some of those supply problems that we have seen here since the launch of the Xbox series. But so far, this seems like it's just been over in the United States and the UK. But interestingly enough, we got more results today for the entirety of Europe, and the results here was nothing short of surprising. So the Nintendo Switch for the month of March did come out in first place. Second place, though, was the big surprise as Xbox beat out the PlayStation 5. Now, that is a huge surprise because this very rarely ever happens in Europe. Europe is well known as PlayStation land, so this type of thing just does not happen. So this definitely comes as a shock that the Xbox series had outsold the PlayStation 5 over in Europe. Now, as always, I like to be very clear about these type of topics. I am not talking about which console has more demand. I'm simply talking about supply. And right now, even though both the Xbox Series and PlayStation 5 are still being affected by short supply, it does seem like Xbox is doing a better job at getting more supply out there right now than the PlayStation 5. It actually sounds like Sony is really struggling with this right now, which is a bit unfortunate. I do hope that we kind of see this pick up here in the next couple of months, but I think that this does kind of show you just how severe these chip shortages are. On one side, big congrats to Xbox. They are doing a much better job at alleviating those supply problems, but hopefully we'll see some improvement from PlayStation throughout the year as well. Let's go move on over to the poll of the day though, and thanks to some new job listings, it has been discovered that Bandai Namco might possibly be working on some type of Nintendo remake or remaster. So I wanted to ask you all if Nintendo and Bandai Namco really are doing a remake slash remaster, what game would you most like it to be? And if we take a look here, you can see that Zelda Wind Waker and Twilight Princess took the number one spot at 43%, then Metroid Prime at 24%, third place was Star Fox Adventures at 16%, and then disappointingly we have Kid Icarus Uprising at the bottom here with 12% of the votes. Yeah, I would have liked to see Kid Icarus get more votes here as I absolutely love that game, but unsurprisingly, Zelda Wind Waker and Twilight Princess took the number one spot here. Now, I don't know if this is necessarily the most plausible out of the choices given here. I actually think that that would be Metroid Prime, but at the same time, Zelda is obviously the most popular franchise out of the four. Truthfully, it would be absolutely fantastic to see these games head over to the Nintendo Switch. I would love that myself, though I don't necessarily know if Bandai Namco would be the ones to necessarily handle these games. But regardless of who does it, I just want it to happen, so I'm with you all there. I mean, also, with the Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 delay, there is that open space for a possible Zelda game to release this year. Just gonna go ahead and throw that out there. Though, out of the choices, I would probably go with Metroid Prime. And the reason I say that is because, for one, I think it's the most plausible choice here, just given Bandai Namco's history with Metroid Prime. But at the same time, I do feel like it makes a lot of sense for Nintendo to bring Metroid Prime back before Metroid Prime 4. 
for as good as the Metroid Prime franchise is, and I mean, a lot of people view these as really some of the all-time greats, unfortunately, a lot of people have missed out on these games in the past. So I think that this is the perfect opportunity to bring back Metroid Prime, release it on the Switch before Metroid Prime 4, and really let that Switch effect take place. Let's bring this franchise back, this generation, in a big way. Let's make it happen, Nintendo. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.